Well, hello everyone. My name is Jesse and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. I know we've got so many familiar faces today, but if you are new to us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Now today is a bittersweet day, I've got to say, because today on the sweet end is the end of our epic Cross Canada virtual road trip. For the second year in a row, we have been partnering with the amazing teams at Parks Canada and Canadian Geographic Education to take you on a journey coast to coast to coast across this incredible country to feature stories of cultural heritage, amazing biodiversity, and so, so much more. We've gone up to the Arctic to paddle rivers, learn about falcons. We've gone flavors of the forts in BC, out on the coast in the East Coast. And today we are heading back to the East Coast for a really, really special program. I do want to note before we introduce today's topic as well that we have an amazing Canadian Geographic Education Contest. So if you are a Canadian classroom and you love today, you want to register for that, there's some amazing chances to win some really cool prizes for your class just by sharing your love of today's program. The bitter part is that it's done. I mean, I'm genuinely a little sad today. I love this series. This is probably my favorite series we ever do as an organization. And so it's kind of a bummer that we're wrapping up today. But it's going to live online forever, so if you want to tune into this program or any of our others on that road trip, you can check them out on YouTube for years to come. Now today we're going to a very cool place, a place that I had the chance to visit just a few years back, and that is Green Gables Heritage Place. Now this is a, an incredible spot in Cavendish, PEI, where Lucy Maud Montgomery birthed into existence this incredible story of Anne of Green Gables, a story that will be familiar certainly to all our Canadian classrooms today, and perhaps most of our American and international friends as well. I'm not gonna steal any more thunder from them taking us on an amazing tour. We might meet a special guest today as well, and so I'm so excited for you guys to be as enthusiastic as me as we wrap up our road trip. Without further ado, Noah, thank you so much for joining us at the Green Gables Visit Center, and take us away. <laughs> Perfect, well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Noah Black here, so hello, bonjour, and epitolasi, everyone. I hear it, everybody is coming from all over Canada. It's so lovely to have you guys here with us, and I'm really looking forward to having this tour. As you mentioned, we are in Cavendish, Prince Edward Island. So Prince Edward Island is the smallest province of Canada and it's found all the way on the East Coast. So it's just a great place over here. And it is a little bit of a rainy day, but we're gonna make the most out of it with everything here. So we are at the Green Gables Heritage Place, a part of Lucy Maud Montgomery's Cavendish home. And today we're gonna to be talking about the author, we're gonna go explore the site and we're just gonna have a great time together. So. You can write in the chat, is anybody not familiar with the stories? Is everybody familiar with them? Who here has heard about it and has anybody ever been here before? Ooh, so again, we've got our live groups with us in uh, Wisconsin and in Ontario right now. On the chat, we've got a whole bunch. I know you guys are a little delayed, but if you want to type in the chat, we'd love to hear from you. I know that I grew up with Anna Green Gables. I read it when I was a boy. I also read Emily of New Moon, another amazing story of Lucy Maud Montgomery. So if anyone wants to share in the chat, if they have the chance to have heard of the story or read it in their class, uh, coming in. Feel free to share anybody. And by the way, teachers, we're going to be on, on you throughout the program today. If you do want to highlight things in the chat, we'd love to hear from you guys. Nothing coming in yet. Maybe they're just too excited. And that's the key. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I don't know. But we've got our one group, Love Anna Green Gables. We read through the third book. See, they're like, they're ripping along. They're past the first story and on to the wow. third. Loved Emily too. We've got from Evelyn. Uh, nice. <laughs> we've got people that love the whole series. Everything to do. And, and Lucy Maud Monk. Oh, that's nice. amazing. And I hope you guys are ready because there's going to be a lot of interaction today. So make sure you stay close to the keyboards to chime in at any point. All right. So you may have noticed when I was doing my little introduction, I had said, welcome, bienvenue, and Eptilasi. So Eptilasi is actually the, uh, the native way to say welcome here in Prince Edward Island. And it belongs to the indigenous people of the Mi'kmaq. So they were the people who were here uh, before the Europeans. And it was on these grounds that they would have lived. Now, I would just like to take a moment and recognize that this is an unceded territory that belonged to them. And all that that really means is that it was taken away from them. So all I would like to do right now is to say a big thank you to them for allowing this tour to happen and to allow this amazing program to take place for all of you guys to get to come experience this, even if you're not here with us in your physical presence, that we get to enjoy this all together. So are you guys ready to go see the site of Anne of Green Gables? I hope so, because we're on our way right now. So follow me. Over there, we can see the author of the story, Lucy Mon Montgomery. Now, it's really because of her that all of us are here today. She was an amazing woman 
who grew up in Cavendish, really not too far away from here, with her grandparents. Now, she was born in the year 1874, so a long, long time ago. But she used to come here often as a young girl, and she got to know the site really well, and she was inspired by it, and she decided, you know what, I'm going to write a story basing it on this area here. And she was writing at a very young age. It was at the age of 15 that she started writing her poems and short stories, and she actually published her first ones at that age there which is just incredible to know that somebody so young could do something so amazing. So again, I'd like to know you guys. Are any of you guys thinking maybe you'll want to become an author one day or maybe there's other professions that you'd like to try out? So yeah, I'd like to hear what kind of stuff do you guys want to be when you grow up? Ooh, how exciting. I know when I was a little boy, like the age of some of our kids in classes, I wanted to be involved in cool education things with science and nature. So I am just like killing it so far. No, I don't know if you wanted to be an educator too, but so far so good. Um, if we've got our friends on YouTube live, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? In fact, I could come to some of our classes. Miss Fletcher's class, if you guys want to unmute some of your kids, if you want to shout out, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Heck yeah. Hi. I want to be a veterinarian and an actress. Cool. cool. I like the duo. That's awesome. <laughs> come on up, guys. Yeah. I want to be a prison guard. Prison guard. That's a, really cool. Guys. Come on up one more. We'll go to Mr. LeBron's next. I want to be a game warden. Game warden. Very got neat. Very unique options today. Mr. LeBron's group. What do we think? Wow. Echo. Double device. <laughs> Hi. You guys want to shout it out? YouTube, what do we got from there too? Future authors, avid readers. Fantastic. Mr. LeBron's group. Yeah. I want to be a police officer. Police officer. A lot of people in services are wow. cool. A baseball player and a paleontologist? Yes, I like that duo. <laughs> really cool. I want to be a dentist. Nice. Awesome. Guys, I, I know we have so many kids that want to share, and it's fantastic. But so no writers yet in our classes, but maybe we'll inspire them at the end of the program, Noah. And you know what? That's so right. And I want to say those are all amazing answers. And I'm sure even though I didn't get hit, didn't get to hear all of them, that they are all great. And you know what's really cool about this place here? Is Lucy Mon Montgomery had imagination first. It was always, everything was with her in imagination. And it's really important that if you have a dream, you make sure to chase that dream and do whatever it takes to make sure that that becomes a reality. So for all those people who are saying they want to become a veterinary, a dentist, uh, a paleontologist, anything of the sort, make sure to just do whatever it takes to get that done. So I guess we'll continue now with Lucy Mon Montgomery herself. Actually over here, we can see some pictures of her. Uh, we can see her through her youth, we can see her parents and all sorts of things. And Lucy Mon Montgomery, like I mentioned, was an author as a, young, uh, as a young child, only at 15 years old she was already writing. But it was almost like the most important part of her life in a way because she decided she was gonna continue on at school. She wanted to become a teacher. And once she became a teacher, she thought, you know what, I better study literature. I want to be better. I want to be able to write my poems, write my sh short stories, write my novels, and get all that done. So that was really what she wanted to do in life. And she went and she chased that dream. Uh, and you know what? In her career, she wrote over 500 poems. She also wrote over 500 short stories and at least 20 novels as well. So many different things. She was just writing all the time. And it was really due to her imagination. So I hope this really inspires you guys to maybe go try and do something like this yourselves. And you never know what might come of it one day because look what she started in the middle of Cavendish Prince Edward Island. So please just make sure to do whatever it takes to get that dream done. We can also see that later on, Lucy Mon Montgomery is taking her writing very seriously, right? So I talked a lot about the different, the different writings that she did, but it was really the story of Anne of Green Gables that made her popular and why we are all here today. And that was a long process to write that novel. It took her over 13 years to write it. She was always changing it, she was working, she was doing all sorts of different things. But when she finally finished that novel, and she sent it off to the publishing company, and then it finally got published in the year 1908, it was just amazing. It was instant success. It was all over the world. We have people coming here from everywhere coming to visit. As you can see over here, there is the title of the book, the cover page of the book there, of what that first edition would have looked like. So we can see that even though it just started here in Prince of Rhode Island, it obviously got around the world because we're all participating at this today. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to just look at a few more pictures of Lucy Mon Montgomery. 
there is a special quote that she wrote about in one of her uh, in one of her stories called the Alpine Path, and it really determined how she wanted to become an author. She wrote, "I cannot remember the time when I was not writing, or when I did not need to be an author. To write has always been my essential purpose around, uh, with every effort." And hope and ambition of my life has grouped itself. So it's just amazing to see that she really chased that dream and she was able to create something so amazing. And you know what's amazing about it with the story of Anna Green Gables? It all started with an idea and a house. And a house that we can kind of see over here. It's maybe a little sneak peek. So you guys are getting a little behind the scenes action. We're going to see a Lego representation of the house. And when I tell you it's accurate, oh, it's very accurate, all the way down to the last flower and tree that is on that site. And do you guys want to maybe take a guess, maybe a quick guess of how many pieces might be in there? How many Lego pieces? <laughs> this is not where I shine. Uh, maybe our students will do a bit of a better job. I'd say, wow. If I'm going to guess while we're waiting for our teachers to type in the chat what they think in terms of the number of Lego pieces, I thousand. Maybe, maybe less. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to be proven wrong. Anyone want to chime in the chat? Now, you don't win anything if you get this right, but you do win Noah and I's everlasting respect if you can nail the oh, number of Legos. Absolutely. We've got 792. We've got the okay. very specific 3264. Okay. We've got 2,000, 9,475, Ms. Lewis's class chimed in with. I think this is a good option, I think. 10,000. What do we think? No, what's the answer? I'll tell you guys, we had a couple of very good guesses. We have exactly 9,792 pieces. So we were some that were like within 300. That's amazing, guys. That's just so cool. And we are going to see this house up close and personal a little bit later on. But I was just hoping to get you guys' interest really going on. So how about we just go down another level? And as we walk down, you can see all these different signs we have nature, self, imagination, and freedom, all these different themes that, for you guys who are familiar with the story, might recognize those things. And throughout this site, throughout this tour that we are all doing together, hopefully that we can really chime into your imagination, uh, your friendship, and all these different things. Now, I'm sure there are some people who are on this, on this call who are not familiar with the story of Anne of Green Gables. So here we have a little representation of the story, and I'll give a little summary for you. So pretty well, the story starts off as Anne of Green Gables. She is a, a young girl who is an orphan over in Nova Scotia. She then gets brought over to Prince Edward Island by a train, and Matthew Cuthbert is there to pick her up and adopt her. She's coming home across the red roads of Avonlea, Prince Edward Island. She's traveling through the white way of delight, and she finally arrives to Green Gables the most beautiful place she could ever imagine, and she just can't get over the fact that she's going to live there. However, it wasn't really meant to be because when they were wanting a young child to come live with them on the farm, they were looking for a young boy to help out on the farm. So when Anne Shirley showed up, they didn't really know what to do, but they decided, you know what, we'll keep her, we'll see what she'll do. And as you can see, Matthew and Marilla, the elderly brother and sister who lived together, absolutely loved her. So it follows along her whole life of her going to school, her having some good adventures and some other misadventures. So I won't spoil too much of the story, but let's just say her with her green hair right there, she was actually trying to dye it black. So something went wrong. So I'm going to make sure you guys might have a little bit of homework after this to go read the story, watch the movie, watch the TV show, whatever you want to do to really familiarize yourself with the story and fall in love with Anne of Green Gables, as many people have already around the world. Now, we also do have a couple of very special pieces in this center as well. One of them is one of the typewriters that Lucy Mon Montgomery used to write on herself. This one here dates back to the year 1906. As you can see, she said she invested in a new typewriter, a practically new one, an empire. It does work fine, but it has a different keyboard, so I have to learn it all over again, and I'm very slow. So how about we take a little closer look at the keyboard? Now, I'm not going to necessarily get you guys to get some answers, but if you can look really close, can anybody find the letter E or A or maybe even the letter O? I don't know. There's a lot of letters that seem to be missing there. I see Jessie's looking very hard. And you know what? It's that she used to write so much on the typewriter 
that she wore the paint all the way off of those keys when she would type. So you can see, she worked countless hours to write her stories and poems and her novels, and this was what would happen. So it's just really cool to see. So maybe you guys, when you're writing in class and you're typing away, maybe you guys will be able to be inspired by this. And when you go home to your computer or your piece of paper and pencil, whatever it may be, you'll be able to wear it all the way down to the end, just like Lucy Maud Montgomery has. And even we have a first edition of her novel. So just like we had seen up in that first section there. So this is a very special piece for us. So it's just so neat to see that after all these years, this piece of history still belongs to us here in Cavendish. Now we do have a couple of more things to check out before we go on to our next part. So we're gonna go down these stairs. And actually, I wanna know something from you guys. Do any of you guys like animals? I heard we wanted somebody who was gonna be a, a veterinarian, right? A veterinarian. So I'm sure you guys might like animals, or you might have animals. Lucy Mon Montgomery absolutely loved cats. That was her big thing. So in her signature, she would often draw a cat with it. Isn't that cool? Are some of you guys maybe going to start drawing an animal with your signature? Or do any of you have a pet that you just absolutely love? I'd love to hear from you guys. Ooh. I mean, maybe not cats for me. I got to say, more of a dog guy. If I tried to draw my favorite animals, it would be like a big great white shark beside my signature. I don't know if that'll suit. The St. Lawrence folks that joined us for our Parks Canada series might appreciate the bell. We got some folks with dogs. <laughs> I bet a lot of dogs and cats in their audience today, but if you do have oh, a good pets, you can let us know in the chat. We like that very much. I love that signature. And by the way, um, as you're walking through it, I just want to stress again, this is such a beautiful center that uh, has been built there. I've had the chance to tour it in person. It's one of the most gorgeous uh, visitors, interactive, uh, interpretive places I've ever seen in my life. And so I hope anyone in PI or traveling there gets the chance to come visit in person. But a lot of dog fans so far as our, our right overwhelming on. YouTube answer. <laughs> well, hey, it's a very popular animal for a very good choice. So maybe one of you would like to add that to your signature, right? Okay, now you might be able to see behind me. Can anybody see what's on the wall behind me? It looks like a lot of book covers. And I think we're going to go a little closer because if you can see all of these book covers, these are the different translations of the novel in very many different languages. So I want now you guys to really take the time to write in the chat. Do you guys speak another language? Does one of, do one of these novels belong to the language that you speak? So. Finnish, Estonian, French, Canadian, Portuguese, the wall is just endless. So feel free to, to talk away about that in the chat. I just put in the chat, if we have any international students joining from other places, I know we've had on our broadcast before people ask questions in Norwegian and Filipino before, uh, so unlikely to have that option today, but if you are in our broadcast and you're from one of our classes and you came from somewhere different or your parents came from somewhere, you speak multiple languages at home, we'd love to hear that. Again, this is a, an amazing, here I'll bring it up full screen again for everybody, but just incredible, the popularity of the story on the world stage. I know that um, one of my favorite facts about uh, people falling in love with the Anne story is that it is still to this day one of the main places for Japanese tourists in the world to come is PEI because it is such a popular story in Japan, which is very, very cool. Uh, a bit slower in the chat, Noah, but if we do hear back from classes, I'll make sure to mention before we get to our next section, okay? Right on. But you know what? We are about to prepare to go to our next section. So we're maybe just going to disappear for about one minute, but we'll find you guys outside this time, all right? Ooh, amazing. Well, thank you so much. No, I'll put you guys in the background as we head outdoors for our special next section. Uh, again, if you do want to chime in the chat, what have we got from some of our classes? Um, so many different languages, just people keen to, to highlight that, which is awesome. I do want to note for everyone today, if you guys have not checked out our amazing road trip series, this is the culmination of it. I'm so happy that we get to end it uh, with Noah, with the amazing Green Gables Heritage Place. But check out the entire site if you want to see all the programs that we've done over the last month and a bit, two months or so, and check the Canadian Geographic Education Contest out. It is such a special way for your classes to share their love of these programs and to Get involved in a, a contest for some really amazing cash prizes for your class. So I hope you guys get the chance to do that. And of course, we'll forward all that to all our registered groups at the end of the program. If you haven't ever been to Prince Edward Island too, I must say, as a lifelong Ontarian, it is just one of the most special places, not just in Canada, but the world. Such a beautiful place to drive around. And the, the site, of course, we've had the chance to see today is just really, really special. 
Speaking of which, we are back with Noah outside, so I'm going to turn it over to him, and let's dive into the second part of the program. Hey, Noah. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. We went from our visitor center to our barns here. So why don't we just walk into the barns, we'll get out of the rain, and we'll get to show you the inside. In here, we have all sorts of different things. We have a turnip pulp or a cedar, a really cool ladder inside of here that you can really see what it used to look like on the farm, and even another little sneak peek of the house of Anne Green Gables. So right now I want to do an exercise with you guys. So it really takes everybody's cooperation and it's only going to work if everybody participates, okay? So I want us to now have an exercise of imagining Anne. So inside we got to see a little bit of drawings about her. We got to hear a little bit about her. But now I want us everybody to just close their eyes, okay? And think, what color is Anne's hair? We saw that it was red right okay and she usually used to wear these beautiful little dresses sometimes that she do a little bit of work in and what else just really think about it and if you guys think hard enough oh your imagination can do so many things so let's just see what can happen is everybody ready okay let's see visitors today, but it's so nice to meet you. My name is Anne Shirley, Anne with an E. It's very important to add the E. What's your name? Oh, my name is Noah. Very nice to meet you, it's Anne. It's to meet Noah. I adore making new bosom friends, and I can tell you are a kindred spirit. Oh, well, thank you, Anne. This is amazing, guys. You're meeting Anne of Green Gables herself. Yes, this is my lovely home, and I'm so happy to welcome you here. Would you like to do the friendship vow with me? Diana and I do it all the time. Can I ask? Okay, okay. Oh, and everyone else, please join in. All right, so all of you, I would love if you repeat it after me. So I solemnly swear to be faithful to my bosom friend, Noah, and all of you. I solemnly swear to be faithful to my bosom friend, Anne, and all of you. <laughs> As long as the sun and the moon shall endure. As long as the sun and the moon shall endure. There we are. We are now all kindred spirits and bosom friends. Yes. I would love to show you my house, but as mentioned, I didn't know you could. Just give me a few minutes and I'll have it all prepared for you all. Absolutely. All right, can you folks still hear us? We sure can. How special was that? And uh, amazing that we get the chance to head into Anne's house. What a cool thing by you. I guess that's our, our Green Gables in the title I see. I'm sorry. I think we're having a little bit of technical oh, difficulty. Sorry. That's okay. We'll get you all back right, in a second. Try with, well, you'll let us know if the wind with this, all right? There we go. Are you back now? Maybe? Okay. Well, I'm not too sure if we're working, but we'll keep going and then we'll find out if it worked out all right or not, okay? Perfect. So welcome now to the barnyard. This is where Anna Green Gables came to live with Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert. We have the buggy that she got to travel on, that she took all the way from the train station to come here to the Green Gables house. And then this is where all the magic happens as well. We have the barns where in the day they would have had all of their cows, they had a chicken coop, a granary, a wood storage, they had all these things. So Matthew, this is a lot of work for Matthew to take care of. But with his help, with the help of Jerry Biak and with everybody else, all the work on the farm can get done. They have their lovely garden over here. And oh, you guys can maybe see the house in the background. So why don't we go a little bit closer and see if Anne is ready for us inside. It's not the most beautiful day, you can still see the gardens, you can still see how Lucy Maud Montgomery loved this place, how Anne absolutely loved it. And I'll tell you guys, you guys are very lucky because it's not everyone who can come and see inside of Anne's house. So if you guys are very nice to her, she'll maybe be able to give you a little surprise. And here, this is actually her favorite tree. Let me tell you about this tree if you guys don't already know. This is what we call, or what she calls, my apologies, the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen is just a beautiful blossoming tree and it was her absolute favorite one. So let's go and see how we do it. Oh, a lovely day out there. I took a walk this morning. It was all misty in the trees. All right. Upstairs we go to my favorite room in the entire house, my own bedroom. 
Oh. Isn't this wallpaper gorgeous? I absolutely love all the flowers that are around. Lilies are my favorite. <laughs> but here is my bedroom. Oh my goodness. Isn't it just grand? I could probably take this off now. Oh, the apple blossom wallpaper. And here, I keep a lot of things in my room, but this is the slate I broke over a mean boy's head named Gilbert Blythe in my first year of school. He called my hair carrots. Oh, at least now the color is a bit more auburn than it used to be, but I shall never forgive Gilbert Blythe. He entered, the iron had entered my soul. But this dress, if I'd known you were coming, perhaps I would have dressed up a little more nicely. This is just my chores gown. But as you can see here, I have some beautiful dresses that will elevate me. But this one is the one that Matthew gave me years ago. It has puff sleeves. Oh, they're to die for. Everyone in Avonlea has puff sleeves. It is the most high fashion thing. And mine have little tiny ones. I'd like to use my own imagination, but they're nice and big. Do you like puff sleeves? <laughs> you can write that in the chat, perhaps. I don't know if it's very fashionable where you're from, but here at Avonlea, it certainly is. Now, if you want to come right close, I love to nickname things all the time. So this is a good friend, Bonnie the Geranium. I greet her every morning once I wake up. Now, do you have names for any plants or trees in your yard? As the one outside, this is one of the best angles of the Snow Queen. Now, later in the spring, she's all in bloom with gorgeous white flowers that just look like snow falling once the wind blows and they tumble to the ground. Oh, it's so, so lovely. And she's just starting to bud now. So we can use our imaginations that she looks all in white. Oh, some of my favorite things. Oh my goodness. I wonder what time it must be. Oh, I have to go meet Marilla. She's coming back from Carmody soon. Do any of you folks have some questions for myself before I run off? Ooh, wow, so many possibilities here, Anne. <laughs> um, that's it for our live classes. If you have any questions for Anne, we can bring you guys in live. If anyone can chimes in on YouTube, great. And we want to make sure you have time to get to your chores with Marilla in just a minute. But Mr. LeBrun's class, Mrs. Saga, if you guys want to come in first for Anne. <laughs> any questions? Take your time. <laughs> second device, second device. Actually, I'll give you guys a quick second. Oh, there we are. Hi. Hello. Hello. Why did you break the slab on his head? Why'd you break the slab, Anne? It sounds pretty hardcore. <laughs> well, he was teasing me and being ever so mean, and then he pulled my hair and called me carrots. Now, I have never liked my red hair at all all it is absolutely ugly i'm sure it looks much better on all you folks who do have red hair adjust myself it's not my preference but i would much prefer gorgeous sunny blonde hair or raven black hair like my best friend diana but gilbert blythe was just so mean all the rage just came down and i smashed it on his head i do not <laughs> recommend to do that to you folks who are students because i got in very big trouble with mr Phillips once i did that and i do kind of regret it now but he severely hurt my feelings. Okay, great but question. that is why. <laughs> Perhaps one more, and then I would love to write letters to all of you and answer any more questions, because I know there's plenty of you watching, and I, I do enjoy writing, like some of you probably do. So I will answer them a little later in the next few days as well, if we don't get to yours today. Well, I do promise we are going to have the opportunity for all our classes to make sure they get questions to you if we don't get them live. Wonderful. And note too, uh, Miss Singh's class absolutely loves your dress. They think you look amazing, so you don't need the, the bigger frock. Your garb right now is just perfectly beautiful. And you talk oh, thank about you. the plants that you think. An Evelyn's tree in Miss Gale's class is named Maple. So we have is so we oh. have other students, other kids that love. That's so the name lovely. Maple. <laughs> Very beautiful name. Very good choice. Would be what? happy to see it at some point. <laughs> oh, maybe in the future. We well, have one more question, and I know you have to go. Yes, the okay. questions group wants to come in in Ohio, in Wisconsin. If you guys want to unmute your mic and ask Anne a question, hey guys. Anne, did your hair stay red all your life? Ooh. Well, there was one time that happened last summer when. A peddler came by, or merchant, and he said that he had an elixir that would change the color of my hair. My goodness, I am so desperate to get rid of the red that I paid him all of my chicken money and I bought it. 
Now, I attempted to dye my hair and he said that it would turn a beautiful black like Diana's, but it actually turned green. I didn't think anything could be worse than red hair, but green hair was atrocious on myself. It was even worse than this color. Can you imagine that? So for a brief period of time, my hair was green, but now it is red again, which I am a little bit more thankful for. And I hope that someday it will become a bit darker to an auburn or brown, mm. like chocolate. Mm. And I will tell you before you have to run, I know you've got to get to those chores, but our audience today absolutely loves your hair. So it might not be oh. your favorite, but certainly our kids from around Canada and the US think it is delightful and a beautiful color. Well, thank you all so much. You're very, very kind kindred spirits. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> Well, Anne, have a fun time for our classes live and at home. If you want to say a big goodbye to Anne, we're going to hang out with Noah for a few more minutes to talk. And I yes. put in the chat the Padlet link where people can write those letters to you and you can answer more questions after the program is done today. So thank you so much for being willing to do Blended, that. Blended, thank you for coming to visit my home and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day exploring here. Mwah. Goodbye, everyone. Mwah. Farewell. <laughs> All right, we're saying farewell to Anne, which is so exciting, so nice to meet her. And I have put in the link in the chat for the Padlet, so please feel free to share questions there, both for Anne and for Noah, if we don't get them all answered today. But Noah, I think you've got a little bit more to tell us before we wrap up today. No, well, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for having participated in this. It's been a real pleasure having you guys participate and being here with us in spirit. And I hope to see you guys all here one day very soon. Awesome. Noah, this has been such a fun program. I'm so excited to dive in with our Q&A. We've got groups from truly all over the place and some really interactive teachers today. Way to go, everybody. Actually, one question we got earlier while we're waiting for our live classes to put their thinking caps on. Um, oh, we need to move. That's all good. Take us wherever. Take us throughout the house. This is very exciting. Um, <laughs> We are going to dive in with Q&A in a second. If you want to share on YouTube, folks, we'd love to hear from you all. Uh, a question about the, the languages with the books. Do you have one in Ojibwe by any chance? Do we know if we have indigenous languages across Canada that are represented in Anne's books? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think so. But that would be a very good project to be done. It'd be very neat to see how we can incorporate all our different communities across Canada to really unite us all together to the story. I think that would be a beautiful thing. We can help make that happen. We'll talk at the end of the broadcast. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Miss Gail's class wants to know, how did Lucy Maud Montgomery decide what Anne would like? So when she's writing the character of Anne, what was the thought process behind some of her features? Okay, so Anne, that's a little bit harder to determine how she really imagined her to come to life. But she really took the inspiration from a lot of things around her. And when she would come to this site and visit her cousins who used to live here on this farm, she used to love looking around at the nature and she was just amazed. And like I mentioned earlier, Lucy Maud Montgomery's imagination was everywhere. She was so particular with all these different spellings and names and everything like that. Like I mentioned earlier, it was Lucy Maud Montgomery. Well, when she wrote Anne, she made sure Anne had an E. When she had wrote her name, she had it a specific way. And even her husband, Ewan, it was a great Scottish name that was always E-W-E-N, but she did not like the E-N, that she decided it was going to be E-W-A-N. And if you go to the cemetery and we see their gravestone, you see that it's written E-W-A-N because she's just so particular. So it's very hard to see where that inspiration came from, but whatever it was, I'm glad that it turned out the way it did uh, for Anne and for Lucy. Fantastic. Thanks, Noah. By the way, for your sake, I wanted to share this. We asked at the beginning of the program how many people knew the story. We have a teacher, uh, Ms. Ryerson Kearney, that read it just for today, like literally before the program. Wow. To, story to get in advance of this program, which is such a special thing. So thank you so much for you folks for doing that. Um, let's dive in with our questions with our live group. So Ms. Fletcher's group, I'm going to come to you guys first, joining us live in Rio. If you guys want to unmute your mic, you are good to go. And Mr. LeBron will come to you next. Hey, Ms. Fletcher. How many books? Yeah. How old is Anne? Ooh. That is a very good question. So the stories of Anne of Green Gables span through a long time, but when she was first adopted by Matthew and Marilla and she came here to Green Bay Gables, she was 12 years old. So right around the same age that a lot of you guys are. 
Fantastic. And then the stories have gone on for a very long time, correct? Like, it's not just the first Anne of Green Gables. Uh, how much of her life does it cover over the course of those tales? Well, it goes pretty well along the way. There are a total of eight different novels. So we get her from going as a young girl, going to school, graduating and going to college, all the way to her adult life. So it really follows her, her whole story and where she ended up in life. Always nice to find a book series where you can begin, fall in love with it, and follow it along for a very long time. Makes a, a year of reading so, so much fun. Absolutely. Mr. LeBrun's class, come on in and go for the questions. I have two boys that have a related question. Okay. Um, what was the typewriter expensive? And also, why was the typewriter look so different than an original computer? Yeah. Oh, wow. Those are excellent questions. And typewriters in the time, they did cost a little bit of money to, to have one. It wasn't everybody who could just afford to have one. But Lucy Maud Montgomery, as a writer and as somebody who took that passion so seriously, she said no matter what the cost would be, that would be the investment that she would make for it. So like you guys, later on at, at school, you have your computers that are laptops. Over time, they change. But when Lucy Mon Montgomery started writing, it started mainly with pencil and paper, and then it worked her way up to a typewriter. So those are like our first computers. When you would make a mistake, there was no backspace to go back and correct that. She would either have to, A, start over on a whole new page, or B, try to find a way with a whiteout to erase that mistake and write it all again. Ooh, sounds exhausting. I'm really glad that I live in the age of computers where I can just erase my mistakes very easily and just erase all YouTube videos if they go poorly. Um, <laughs> so let's, uh, again, our YouTube friends, if you guys have any questions for us, we'd love to hear from you about the site, about some of the stuff they're doing. Time flies when you're having fun, so we are nearing the end of the broadcast, but I will head back to our live classes for one more each. So Ms. Fletcher's group, come on back in, unmute your mic, and you're good to go. Hey, guys. Um, do they have a bathroom or a chamber? Pot in the house. Nice. Those are okay. I have to say, I'm amazed that you guys even know what the chamber pot is because it's not everybody who knows. So, here in Prince Edward Island, it gets pretty cold. So, getting that chamber pot is very important because they did not have a bathroom in the house. They had an outhouse. So, if they didn't want to use the chamber pot, they had to walk outside about 30 feet. And on a cold winter's night, oh, that's a long, long walk. I, I like that, uh, of course, the, the popular conception of PEI is always in the summer where it's really beautiful and it truly is one of the most special places on earth. But I know having visited PEI, the PEI people will tell you, wow, the winters are a little bit different here. So for our folks yeah. that might be joining from further south in the United States especially, uh, that 30-foot walk can be really long in January. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, great question, guys. All right, Mr. LeBron's class, coming back to you. Take us away. Go ahead. How many people bought um, Annie's books? Ooh, how many yeah. people have bought? That one, I'm honestly not too sure of an exact number, but if you want, we can try to find a way to get in, in touch with you guys at a later date and give you a more, speci uh, more precise number. Yeah. So again, that Padlet link, the one that I shared earlier in the chat, I'm going to make sure all our classes have. If you have questions like that, we can get you those specific answers over the next few days. So please do feel free to share there. It's like your one-stop virtual whiteboard, and we'd love to hear from you guys. Now, Diana on YouTube wants to ask, did Lucy live in Uxbridge, Ontario, or near there, or anywhere else over the course of her life? I know what she's referencing here, but take us away, Noah. <laughs> yeah, so Lucy Mon Montgomery actually did live out in Ontario. So... When we were talking about Lucy Mon Montgomery's life, and I said she lived near here, in the year 1911, her and her husband, they moved out to Ontario, and she lived there the rest of her life. Now, she obviously, she came back to Prince Edward Island. She absolutely loved coming to visit here to see family, the scenery, and just her home. But she went to go live all around in Ontario, a few different spots, and the final place where she lived was in Toronto, Ontario. Okay, very, very cool. By the way, while you were answering that, I looked up our number of copies for Anne of Green Gables. So again, we will get you a more set reference for this at the end, but 50 million copies have been sold in 110 years. By, just for our class's sake, about 10,000 copies is considered like a bestseller in Canada. So 50 million is doing very, very well in all those languages and around the world. So what a special, yes. special story. I'm so glad I didn't attempt to answer that because I was thinking, oh, it's at least a million, but I'm, am I crazy saying that? <laughs> um, 
Guys, I, I want to keep make sure that we keep learning going for all our classes. So again, if you guys want to check out the amazing Green Gables Heritage Place, if you get the chance to visit, I'll bring up those sites and make sure all our classes have those links at the end. If you have additional questions, the path below is your one place that you can do that over the next few days. And again, this whole series has been made possible by the amazing teams at Parks Canada, as we've had the chance to visit today, Canadian Geographic Education, and us at Exploring Love the Sea of Japan. So please do head to the site, check out the whole series, watch this program again if you've missed something you wanted to catch it, share it with your friends, and join in the amazing contest over the next two weeks. Uh, Noah, before we wrap up today, is there one final message that we want kids that are joining from all around the world today to take about Anne, this incredible story, or the place that you're joining us from today? Absolutely. So I really made a big focus on the imagination part, but the other big part of this story, and it almost turns out to be the whole premise of it, is the friendship as well. As we all did the friendship promise together, I make sure that everybody recognizes how important those friendships are in school, outside of school, that everybody can be very nice to everybody, get along, and that maybe one day we'll all just be able to come, enjoy, and really reunite with the story of Anne Green Gables. Noah, I couldn't think of a better message to wrap than that. Again, I encourage all our classes, head to the Green Gable site. If you guys want to learn more about the amazing place they've got there, uh, do a deeper dive in with this information. It's all there for you guys to check out. Thank you so, so much for this special, special and unique program today. I, I absolutely love it. And what we do to end every program is we're going to bring in our live classes and YouTube classes. If you want to yell out as well, we'd love to have you do that. Uh, and just say a big thank you and farewell. So Ms. Fletcher's group, Mr. LeBron's group, join me in saying thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.